Hey guys, it's Victoria, and uh, for one of my Vlogmas videos, I thought I would just sort of sit down and talk about me. Um, when I started vlogging, I kind of just jumped right into the pregnancy side of things, and then started doing like some day in the life and some tags and recipes and crafts, and things like that. But I never really talked about me and sort of who I am and what my life has been like to get me to this point. So I thought I would do sort of a two part video and one would just be like my childhood and my school and my work experience. And then I'll do another one that is sort of my um, mine and Matthew's like relationship story. So um, I guess I'll just jump right in. Um, I'll try not to keep this, uh, try not to make this too long, but um, so I live in the same city now that I was born in and that I grew up in. Um, both of my parents are retired teachers. My father uh, spent most of his career in administration and my mom taught at all, at all levels, um, at, uh, finishing as a high school English teacher. So growing up, um, I didn't get away with much. <laughs> Having parents in the education system, I couldn't get away with anything. So I was a pretty good student, um, you know, did well in, in school, enjoyed school. I have a younger sister, um, She, her name is Kristen. She's four years younger. Growing up, we were always very, very close. Uh, people always remarked on how close we were given we were four years apart. That's a pretty big gap, and I know from talking to other people, a lot of people growing up that have that big of a gap between their siblings, they're not really close growing up, and we always really, really were. Uh, my friends were her friends, and when we would have sleepovers, like she would come along, and it wasn't in like the annoying little sister way, it was because we, w we really wanted her to be there. So we were always really, really close. Uh, having parents who were both teachers, we traveled a lot because they had summers off, so it was nothing for us to get in the car um, for like Easter weekend and go up to Montreal, which is like a eight, nine hour drive or go down to Boston. We had family there. We still have family there. So we traveled a lot. One summer we drove from here to the Grand Canyon and we live on the Atlantic coast of Canada. So we went up through Quebec and Ontario and then cut down to the States and went over through South Dakota, spent a few days there. It's a beautiful spot. I would love to go back there with the kids. Cut down through Wyoming to uh, Colorado, spent about five days there. My uncle and his family were living there at the time. And then all of us traveled to Arizona to the Grand Canyon, spent a couple days there. And then we drove back through like, Kansas and Missouri. And I'd have to look at the map to see all the different states and then went back up to Ontario and then back home. So it took about six weeks, we were on the road, we camped, and it was amazing. And it was like nothing out of the ordinary for us. We'd just get in the car, we'd drive about six hours every day, get out, set up the trailer, and we got to see some incredible things. So it was a really amazing experience. And I hope to be able to give some of that to our kids as they get older. Um, I like to go back to some of those places. Um, so... Growing up, I was involved in music. I sang with a girls choir. It was about 60 girls ages 9 to about 17 or 18. And we performed in the city and we traveled. We did some big trips in the summers. We actually went over to Holland and England in my first year. I was 11 and without my parents and 60 other girls and some chaperones. We went over to a music festival in Holland and spent about close to a week there and then went to England and spent a week there and I mean I was I was just a kid I didn't even know the magnitude of what I was seeing or, or being able to do we sang at Westminster Abbey which is incredible and at the time it didn't really mean that much to me but now being older I realize how lucky I was and I again want to go back there someday too and see some of those things again so I was in that choir until uh, I graduated high school and I was never really athletic. I played a little bit of basketball when I was really little, but was not very athletic. Uh, in junior high, I joined the band. I played the saxophone, um, and that sort of was my niche. I was really involved in the band all through school, through junior high and high school, and then continued to play uh, with a jazz ensemble through university. I don't really play anymore. I still have uh, have my saxophone, and Matthew keeps saying, oh, we should sell that. And, I said, no, we've, when our kids are older, if none of them want to play it, then maybe we'll sell it. But 
I'm hoping that one of our kids will be musical. I, they're, they're both musical right now. I mean, they love music, but hopefully one of them wants to go into the band and we'll have an instrument all ready for them. So that was sort of my my niche and where I spent my lunch hours and after schools growing up. Um, in high school, I was involved in a program called Junior Achievement, which I know is a program that's offered all around the world. And it's for like young entrepreneurs. So you're put into a group and you elect like a president and vice presidents and you make a business plan and you create a product and you actually manufacture the product, go out and sell it, do an annual report. And it was a really neat program. And I think it sort of fostered my love of entrepreneurship at a young age. Uh, I definitely get my love of music um, well, from both my parents. They both love music. My mom is very, very talented. She is a beautiful singer, um, sings you know, at church and at weddings and things all um, throughout my whole life. She was involved in like local theater groups and I remember going to see her when I was little. And my sister actually, that's what she does for a living. She's a musical theater performer and uh, has performed all across Canada and some in the States and uh, different musicals and she is the most talented person I know and the most passionate person I know and it's so amazing to have seen her follow her dreams and succeed. Uh, most recently she toured through um, the US and a little bit into Canada with The Wizard of Oz so I actually went out to Tucson, Arizona to see her in that which was amazing. She understudied The Wicked Witch and she was going to be going on that week, so my mom and I went out to see her, and it was amazing. So her and her husband, she just got married in uh, in September. They live in Toronto, so they're quite a ways away from us, but we see them as much as possible. So that's sort of up to the end of high school, I guess. Um, after I graduated, I went to... University of New Brunswick and I entered the engineering program and you know in high school I loved math I loved science I was really good at like physics and there was a real push at that time to get girls into the sciences and into engineering and it just seemed like a good place to go I knew that there was a lot of good job prospects and well it didn't take me long before I knew that that was not a good fit for me um, I finished out my first year I did fine. I always want to tell people it's, I didn't drop out of engineering because I couldn't do it. I just didn't want to do it. I passed all my courses. My grades were, were decent. Um, it just wasn't for me. So at the end of my first year, I switched into the faculty of business and that was a much better fit. And I graduated in 2005 with a Bachelor of Business Administration and an Honors in Marketing. So my, um, and it's funny because a lot of the vloggers that I watch on here have sort of a background in PR and marketing and stuff. So I wonder if it's like just a, people who like that stuff like to make vlogs. I don't know. Um, so after I graduated, I started working in the field, in the marketing field and I was so blessed to get an amazing job. I was the marketing director for a theater in our city and it was like the dream job for me because it combined my, my education with my passion for the arts and it was just incredible. It was a small group. I had, you know, I was basically, me and another girl were sort of the marketing department. And it was just, the experience was second to none, really, for a first job out of university. So uh, I worked there for about three years. And another position came up. Actually, I think it was Matthew that told me about it. And it was a really good opportunity. You know, it paid really well. It was a pretty prestigious place to work. And I applied and I was offered the job. And it was one of those things that in the back of your mind, you you know, this isn't the right move for you. But the opportunity on paper was just too good to pass up. So I left my job at the theater for this other position. And I knew within the first week this is not the place for me. And I'm not gonna get into specifics, it just wasn't a good fit for me. So I only was there for six months and I left that job. But when I first started, I had worked with a girl at the theater who at the time I was getting married, she had just gotten married. We only worked together for a short time, but we really hit it off and we had a lot in common. And I remembered one day over lunch, just sort of a comment that she made, Oh, I always thought it would be like so awesome to be an event planner. 
And I said, yeah, me too. Like, that would be so great. And, you know, event planning and marketing sort of go hand in hand. And she did some event work uh, at the theater where, she, where we worked together. And so I sent her an email and I said, let's get together and talk about this. And, you know, were you serious? Let's see what we could maybe do. So we got together over coffee one night. And within a month or two, we had a business name, we had business cards, we had a website, and we hit the road and started to see other vendors in the event um, in the, the event industry in our city and introduced ourselves. And we sort of fell into the wedding niche uh, early on. And within a few months, we had a couple of weddings booked. So we started out, we specialized in um, just event coordinating um, and planning and then as we moved on we added decor and rental services so we were in business for five years and at the end of that we were really a full uh, a full service event planning company we did mostly weddings but we did do um, some corporate events as well and a few like personal anniversary birthday type parties but mostly weddings and so when I left the, this job that I had taken after I left the theater, I had this business. We sort of started to build ourselves. We had a few jobs booked. People thought I was crazy, but I got to the point where I was so miserable in this job that it didn't matter what people thought at that point. So I left that job and worked on the business full time. And then I did actually have to go back to work and get like sort of a day job for a little while until I had Noah, just because starting a new business, you're not obviously drawing money or drawing a salary right away. So I did go and get another, another job for a short time until I had Noah. And then after I had him, it was full-time uh, event planning and it was an incredible, incredible experience. We grew a business from the ground up. We had three employees uh, part-time. We had a huge inventory of decor and rentals, and we were booked pretty much every weekend from about May until the end of October, and then again like over Christmas. And I think our last summer in business, we had about 35 weddings, and when you think about how many weekends there are, that's a lot of weddings. So it was amazing, and it was an incredible opportunity, incredible experience, but it was one of those things that did not mesh well with having a young family because it, you know, when you're a co-owner or a, an owner of a business, everything falls on you. And I was lucky that I, I had somebody else as well to share the workload with, but everything is, is on your shoulders. And it took us out of the house two, three week, two, three evenings a week on the weekends, um, we were gone like all day Saturday and then a lot of the day Sunday and every long weekend we were working all weekend. So it just, it was a big sacrifice for the family for me to do it. And it got to the point where I wasn't able to commit fully to being a mom or fully to being a business owner and something had to give. And for us, we wanted me to be able to stay home. We didn't want to put the kids in daycare. As an event planner, I wasn't making enough to justify putting the kids in daycare. So I decided, and this is like probably the hardest decision I've ever made, that it was time to step back from the business. So I was so nervous to have this conversation with my business partner. And the funny thing is when I sat down to talk to her, she had come to the same conclusion. She had a young family for the same reasons. She wanted something more stable, more nine to five. And I wanted to be able to stay home, so it actually worked out well that we decided to sort of close our doors at the, at the same time and move on. So we were able to sell our stuff, and I have since worked a little bit for a couple of other event planning companies in the city just to keep my foot in the door and to keep busy and to bring in a little bit of extra money and, you know, keep my, my brain active. And so that's sort of my, my work experience. Um, outside of work, I sing in a, a local ladies' choir. My mom sings in that as well. Um, I'm super close to my parents. We see them several times a week. They live about 15 minutes away. Um, I'll link the videos to, below to my um, like pregnancy journey with the two kids, so you'll see, you can you can watch there how uh, how that all went and how I got to where I am as far as being a mom. And as most of you probably know, I am pregnant with baby number three right now. 
Um, the plan is someday when the kids are in school to go back to work full time. Um, that's a scary thought. You know, that's something I think about a lot, being out of the, the workforce for so long. Um, I'm sure going back and getting a job is not the easiest thing, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So um, thanks for watching. I think that basically, oh, I didn't talk about my, lo my love for hockey. That's a big part of our lives too. Um, my father is a local, uh, he coaches midget AAA hockey. So that's uh, 15, 16, 17 year olds. And he also helps out with the university team. And uh, he did some scouting through when I was in school uh, for the Dallas Stars. He was a regional scout for them at the time when they won the Stanley Cup. So he has a Stanley Cup ring, which is pretty cool. Um, and I never played hockey and my sister never did, but I'm a huge, huge hockey fan. And as you've seen some, from some of our day in the life, Noah started playing hockey, which is really exciting. And he loves it. He was just begging me to play hockey with him a little bit ago. So I like sit on a stool and shoot the, shoot the ball at him because I'm not very comfortable up moving around too much these days. So, um, yeah, so that's just the other, the other passion of mine, I guess. So yeah, if you have any questions or uh, comments on anything, feel free to leave them below and I will film part two of my sort of relationship history, um, Matthew and my story, and I will post that on another day in Vlogmas and once I do, I'll link that below. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.